Hello, this is Michael Altos, and we're continuing our discussion of induction agents and sedatives. This is recording part two. Next, let's move on to the barbiturates. There are many different drugs in this category, including phenobarbital, methohexatol, thiopental, thiamylol, and cecobarbital. All of these drugs work in the brainstem at the reticular activating system, and they depress this consciousness center. They suppress certain excitatory transmitters, like acetylcholine, and enhance inhibitory neuro neurotransmitters, like GABA, which is gamma aminobutyric acid. Barbiturates are water-soluble, but the preparation is very alkaline, with a pH greater than 10, and it's not very stable, lasting only a few weeks in the refrigerator. Often you'll see barbiturates um, as a powder, which needs to be reconstituted. They are a weak acid with a pKa close to 7.4. If these drugs extravasate out of the peripheral IV, there may be pain, but they don't usually cause any pain on normal injection, so that differentiates them from propofol. However, if you would accidentally inject a barbiturate, especially a thiobarbiturate, into an artery, this can cause severe damage, crystal formation, and thrombosis and necrosis, which needs to be treated with a specialized regimen of papaverin to cause vasodilation, lidocaine, and patients may even require anticoagulation with heparin or a stellate ganglion block to prevent long-term pain syndromes. Barbiturates can be divided into two general classes, thiobarbiturates and oxybarbiturates. The thiobarbiturates, like thiopental or thioamylol, tend to be more lipid-soluble and therefore be a little bit higher in potency, more rapid onset, and shorter duration. The most popular thiobarbiturate was thiopental, also called pentothal, and it's no longer available in the United States easily, partially because it was used by many states as part of their lethal injection cocktail. And due to manufacturer objections, those drug, that drug is no longer routinely used in anesthesia practice. Oxybarbiturates include phenobarbital and methohexatol. These drugs tend to have lower lipid solubility, be less potent, have a slower onset, and a longer duration. But methohexatol is an exception to this rule. It tends to be more potent and be shorter duration of action, even, more shorter, even a shorter duration of action than thiopental. Barbiturates are routinely given IV for general anesthesia. They can be given rectally or intramuscularly for pre-medication as well. And some barbiturates are available orally. They are still lipid-soluble drugs, and they follow the same distribution and redistribution that we saw earlier, with a fast onset of under a minute, rapid redistribu redistribution after about 10 to 20 minutes after a single dose. You may see higher plasma levels in patients who are hypovolemic, hypoalbuminemic, have acidosis or in elderly patients. And with all other uh, lip lipophilic drugs, we know that multiple doses leads to saturation of the peripheral compartments and slows down the redistribution process. Barbiturates are probably a poor choice for maintenance of anesthesia because of this um, phenomenon of saturation of peripheral compartments. <clears throat> Barbiturates are metabolized almost completely in the liver by hepatic oxidation. Methohexatol is an example of a drug with high hepatic extraction with perfusion-limited metabolism and a short elimination half-life. Thiopental is an example of a drug with low hepatic extraction with um, more capacity-limited metabolism and a longer elimination half-life. From a single dose, we don't usually see any prolonged effect. The drugs are then excreted renally but because they're protein-bound and lipid-soluble, it's hard to excrete them in the kidneys until they have undergone biotransformation. The elimination half-life of these drugs ranges from 3 to 12 hours. The usual dose of thiopental is 3 to 5 milligrams per kilogram, which is about double the dose of propofol. And in infants, I would double it again to about 6 to 8 milligrams per kilogram. The drug can also be used for treatment of intracranial hypertension or intractable seizures at an infusion rate of 2 to 4 milligrams per kilogram per hour. Methohexatol, as we said, is more potent 
and can be used at lower doses of 1 to 1.5 1 milligrams per kilogram IV. <clears throat> the barbiturates also will cause a decrease in blood pressure, although perhaps not as profound as with propofol. You will see an increase in heart rate, and there seems to be some central vagolytic effect that causes patients to become tachycardic with barbiturates. We also see venous pooling from some vasodilation. Cardiac output is usually maintained in patients who receive barbiturates, unless they're very hypovolemic or have significant heart failure or beta blockade, at which point cardiac output and blood pressure can drop quite a bit. <coughs> it does decrease the hypoxic and hypercapnic drive, and patients who receive barbiturates can experience airway obstruction. Bronchospasm and laryngospasm are a little bit more common with barbiturates than with some of the other IV drugs. In the CNS, we see a decrease in cerebral blood flow and intracranial pressure, a substantial decrease in cerebral metabolic rate, to the point where you can achieve burst suppression on EEG. And you may have surgeons doing vascular surgery in the brain who request barbiturate administration in order to substantially drop cerebral metabolic rate in order to protect the brain from hypoxia and ischemia. Some have hypothesized that barbiturates may be anti-analgesic, that is, they work against analgesic drugs, but they are definitely anti-epileptic and can stop seizure activity. Patients can become tolerant to barbiturates and become dependent on them. With methohexital, we do see some neuroexcitation symptoms. We see myoclonus, hiccups, and some question of seizure activity. Methohexital is one of the drugs of choice currently for electroconvulsive therapy. <clears throat> In the kidney, barbiturates decrease renal blood flow due to hypotension and decrease hepatic blood flow. They also lead to induction of cytochrome enzymes. One point that you should be aware of with barbiturates is they can cause porphyrin formation, leads, which leads to porphyria. <clears throat> Porphyria is a pretty rare syndrome, but it does show up a lot on board exams. So you should be aware that porphyria is a disorder of one of the enzymes in the pathway that synthesizes heme. Acute porphyria is an overproduction and accumulation. Patients may experience abdominal pain, vomiting, neuropathy, weakness, seizures, hallucinations, depression, anxiety, or paranoia, and they can develop cardiac arrhythmias, pain, and GI symptoms like constipation and diarrhea. So that you shouldn't give barbiturates to patients who have porphyria. Also, thiobarbiturates may evoke histamine release. <clears throat> Moving on to our next IV drug, etomidate. Etomidate depresses the reticular activating system, that consciousness net center in the brainstem, and it also mimics GABA, the inhibitory neurotransmitter. Etomidate causes some disinhibition of motor activity, and so we routinely see myoclonus, which looks kind of like seizure activity when we give a bolus of etomidate. And this can be attenuated if you premedicate with benzodiazepines or opioids first. <clears throat> etomidate is very lipid soluble, and we normally receive it in a propylene glycol um, medium. This causes some pretty severe burning on injection. Some of the books talk about etomidate available in a fat emulsion like propofol, but I've never seen it. In this case, they say there's no burning. <clears throat> etomidate is, of course, given IV, and it is highly lipid soluble, and so it rapidly reduce, redistributes to other tissues. It is also highly protein bound. Etomidate undergoes biotransformation in the liver by hydrolysis, but also by plasma esterases in the bloodstream. If patients have severe liver disease, you may, you may see prolonged action of etomidate because both the hepatic activity and the hepatic generation of these esterases can be limited. It's then excreted in the urine, and a normal induction dose of etomidate is 0.2 to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram. I would suggest that in a 20 milligram vial, that should probably be enough for just about any adult. And if you're opening another vial, maybe you're giving too much.
Etomidate is notable for its minimal cardiovascular effects, and for that reason, it's often considered the first-line induction agent in patients who are unstable, in trauma patients, bleeding patients, septic patients, and so on. But we should be very clear that there's no such thing as a safe drug in critically ill patients. Any very unstable patient who receives an anesthetic drug can undergo cardiovascular collapse. Etomidate has minimal respiratory effects. In the CNS, it also decreases cerebral metabolic rate and cerebral blood flow and lowers ICP. We already described the myoclonus. Etomidate is also a drug that enhances SSEP amplitude. So if patients are having somatosensory motor evoked potential monitoring, etomidate may have some benefit. It is anti-epileptic, but we see seizure-like signals on EEG in epileptic patients. No motor activity, though. Etomidate may increase the risk or the incidence of post-operative nausea and vomiting. Another important point about etomidate is its effect on cortisol and aldosterone synthesis. Even a single dose of etomidate can inhibit synthesis of steroid and lead to adrenal insufficiency. And this has been shown in some studies to be associated with a prolonged hospital stay, a prolonged ICU stay, increased time on the ventilator. And this is a subject of ongoing debate. And you'll definitely meet people who have strong feelings about using or avoiding etomidate, particularly in patients who are critically ill. One other interaction, they say that fentanyl can increase etomidate levels and prolong its action. So be on the lookout for that drug interaction. We'll stop here. Please let me know if you have any questions about the material, and thanks for your attention.